Hey, hey, everybody. Glad to have you with us today. Appreciate you being a part of our show as we get started today. My name is Dean Renfro. If you're just joining me for the first time on my Lunch and Learn, be sure to click on notifications up there and you can follow along with our Lunch and Learn anytime that we're live here today. So we're going to give our folks a few minutes to uh, kind of uh, get uh, either off their, on their lunch break or uh, get their lunch together or decide what they're going to do here about getting on with us today. So uh, appreciate you being a part of the show. If you're joining me on the replay, uh, which you can do that, there's a couple things you need to know. Of course, just click on notifications up there. Follow along anytime we're live. You can also type in the comment box underneath the video and leave your comments or ask a question. Or you can give us a thumbs up or a heart. Uh, you can do all that, and we can respond back to you even if you're on uh, the replay. So uh, we'll just kind of try to follow along. If you come on, uh, be sure to say, jump in and say hi. Let me know you're here, and uh, if you're new to the show, let me know where you're from, uh, and uh, that'd be kind of cool. So we kind of know who people are. We can have a conversation with you. Of course, you can also do that right there and give us thumbs up, okay? And uh, that's kind of cool. All right, so today we're going to get started. Uh, we're going to get started today with, uh, I think, something that, you know, is a topic that uh, people often find, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, they struggle with a lot. And, and, and that is it involves a, a lot to do with our own self and being able to get things done or to get things accomplished or to make something happen or to take a step forward or to change something in our life or to quit doing something in our life or to go a new direction in our life. Uh, and that has a lot to do with things that are happening up here in our head uh, and has a lot to do with things we call self-confidence, right? I mean, it just it just does. And uh, I'm just kind of following along here with uh, people's comments as they make comments here. And we want to make sure we share uh, this with everybody, okay? And uh, let me go back there. Share this as a, as a share now. Let everybody know, hey, we're out here doing this. And uh, I, that's another thing you can do in joining the show. You can click the share button down there at the bottom and uh, immediately share our broadcast with everybody. So today we're going we're gonna to be talking about this right here. Six, six inside your head thinking patterns that are killing your self-confidence. And how do you change that? In other words, what do you do with... Uh, kind of our own struggle with ourselves, right? How do you, how do you, what do you do with our own struggles with ourselves? Because that's really a big deal for people all the time, and uh, it's just something you, that, that we deal with, right? That's just something we deal with. And uh, let me get back over here. I forgot to turn my phone off, uh, and uh, just kind of see what's going on. I don't know if uh, because I didn't get, I uh, hadn't had a lunch and learn last week at all that I just kind of lost the audience. But uh, hey, we're glad you're here and appreciate you being a part of today. So, so, so one of the, one of the first things that happened, one of the first things that happened with people, is um, the one of the first inside thinking things is the uh, inability to take action because of what's going on up here. In other words. They don't feel prepared up here, or maybe with their hands, or with the, with their conversation, or even what they've been thinking uh, in that process. So they're they're not uh, prepared, and 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 that oftentimes will keep us from taking action. In other words, if we go to do something and suddenly we realize, oh, I left out blank, or oh, I didn't bring blank, or oh, I didn't think about blank. And we're not prepared. Okay, so so that kind of takes away from our self confidence, our ability to take action, to make something happen, make a change, do something different, because we don't feel prepared. Now, depending on a couple, one of the other things that we'll talk about here in a minute, uh, it, it, a lot of that has to do with who you are as a person. There are some personality components that feel like it, one more piece of information, and then I'll know everything there is to know, and I can make the decision. On the other end of the spectrum is I really I don't need a whole lot of information. I just need to know what I'm what's supposed to happen, and I'm going to go make it happen. Okay, that there's that component. So uh, they don't always have all the preparation done, but they take action. Then there's the other end of the spectrum is I need one more piece of information to be prepared. Now, 
What do you do about that? Well, first, first thing you have to do is know what you need to know. Uh, oftentimes, we fail to realize that what we know in the scope of all the things there is to know is a sliver. Is a sliver. There's things we don't even know we need to know that we're supposed to know because we don't even know they exist. Okay, uh, and, you know. So that's that's a that's a that's a part of it. That's a part of it. Uh, and then there are things that um, that we do that we have uh, that we know a lot about. In other words, it could be something we went to school for, something we've done all our life, something we've trained for, something we've studied for. Uh, and, and so we are very prepared about that, and it's easier for us to take action. Or there's a habit that we have all the time, and therefore we don't even know we're doing it. Uh, and, and it just happens inside of us. In, we might call it instinctive. It's not instinctive. It's just a habit we've developed. Uh, along the way. And then there are instinctive things that we just feel confident doing. Okay. Go back to, to go back to the simplest things that uh, take riding a bicycle, learning to ride a bicycle. There was a time that you weren't confident riding a bicycle, right? You just, you got on it and you might have fell off a time or two or your parents uh, held you as you, it, you know, kept the bicycle up straight or maybe you had training wheels. Uh, and all that kind of thing, and, and and you were just nervous, you know. And then you learned, you learned you could ride it, and it would stay upright, and you wouldn't fall over and hurt yourself. Okay. Then then you got to that inevitable point that you drove down the down the sidewalk or down the street or in the in the uh, uh, other things that you might be doing with it. And guess what? Guess what? Then you got down there, and you realized you had to turn around. You had to turn the bicycle. And you panicked because you'd never done that before. You weren't prepared. Nobody told you, here's how you turn your bicycle around. You know, and, and so there are things that we, we don't take action because we're not prepared. We're not prepared, okay? Then number two uh, uh, in, in our life, the things that go on in our thinking in the process of what we're doing is that we, we uh, many people, many people's personality is... Uh, uh, what I, I want to call it, their, ne their, their thinking is negative. They go to the glass is half empty concept. They go to uh, uh, the, the I can't syndrome or I don't know syndrome or it probably won't happen or this it, er, anything I do always turns out wrong for me kind of thing. In other words, the whole negative con connotation, and that has a lot to do with your environment, uh, that you've been raised in. It does have to do with your personality uh, because sometimes you, you're your own worst enemy in this process. So the fact that you are, uh, you think negatively is because it's something you've learned. Okay. You hung around people who were negative uh, or it's, it's your own thinking up here. It's that little person sitting on your shoulder talking to you all the time, whispering in your ear, you can't, you're you, you, you know, you, you're stupid, you're dumb, you don't really know how to do this, nobody believes in you, uh, this, this, everything always fails for you, nothing works out for you, uh, and so that kind of becomes what, what happens for uh, yourself, and what we see people uh, get that pattern of negativity in their mind, and, and uh, so I really don't know if anybody's watching my show today, because I don't see anybody on the show, so we're just going to keep going on somebody will pick it up here in a minute so how do you how do you cure that how do you cure that well first of all uh, you need to you need to create a habit of positivity of thinking positive okay hey Keith appreciate you being with us today uh, you want to create a pattern of positivity right that is you want to begin to think about things that are positive instead of immediately saying I can't do that or I don't know how to do that or this probably won't turn out good for me. Learn how to turn that around immediately. You know, you might not be able to say, I know I can do that. But you might be able to say, you know, I think this could be possible. I think this could be possible. And then figure out the components that you need. In other words, if the glass is half empty, that's how you see it, then figure out, well, what do I need to fill up the glass? That goes back to the first thing we talked about is preparation. Okay, so hey, if you're just now joining me on the broadcast today, my name's Dean Renfro. You can follow along by clicking on notifications up there and turning those on so you know every time we're on. You can also type in the comment box 
below this video. Let me know you're here just by saying, hey, hey, I'm here. Hi. You know, and uh, if you're new to the show, tell me where you're from. If you've got a question or a comment you'd like to make, you can also type that in the comment box. And uh, it'll be a part of the feed, part of the show. And I might be able to respond to that as we go through the show. So if the glass is half empty, then look around and go, what do I need to fill up the glass? You know, what needs to happen for me to fill up the glass? Well, hey, I need a pitcher with some water in it. Okay. Or I need some more information. I need to know, well, how many ounces does it take? In other words, don't take on the negative approach. I can't look around and go, what is it I need to make this happen? So go back to the, the, the process of being uh, prepared. So in other words, don't say, okay, I'm not, you know, look at the, okay, the glass is half empty. And I don't, I, instead of saying, well, I can't do anything with that, go, okay, let me step back and find out what do I need to make this work and get prepared. Then you can step back up and, and be positive about, I can fill up the glass. I can do that. I can make that happen. I can take action. Or I can change because now I know what I need to change. You see, oftentimes the reason uh, people struggle with change, and it happens every day to us, every day is a different day, uh, is that the, they struggle with, they don't know what to change. And so therefore, they become negative about their change. And of course, then what they don't want to happen happens because they think about that all the time. Because the Bible talks about it and says, what, uh, whatever a man thinks in heart, that's what, that's what happens. Why? Because that's the focus. We almost tell ourselves uh, to fail. You know, we, all, we tell ourselves, oh, I can't fill up that glass. And we tell ourselves that over and over and over and over again from a negative position instead of thinking, I can so because of the flip side of that in the Bible is uh, Paul talked about it. And he said, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. So his, his, com com his comment about negativity and be versus being positive was, I can do that with an empowerment from God. I need Christ. In his case, he said, I need this. I need this in my life. Jesus oftentimes would talk with his disciples about the exact same thing. They would go out and do something that trying to do something that he'd done, and they come back and say, we can't do that. And then Jesus will say, well, here's what you need to go out and do that. Instead of saying, we can't do that, go do this first. So part of it is understanding not being negative in your mind and telling yourself negative things all the time. Hey, Marty, thanks for all the likes. Appreciate you being on the show. Uh, so we got we got we got the part about thinking positively. We got the part about being prepared. Uh, another component uh, about people that goes on up here is they don't know themselves very well. They don't they don't understand the internal workings of who they are as a person. My personality style lends me to not only look at the glass as being half full but then I can fill it up in a moment's notice. Okay, in other words, I look at, I can do that. I don't think about, I can't do that. That's, that's way, way, it, it, it even enters my mind only after I might have uh, done everything a hundred different ways to try to make the glass become full. You know, okay, so, so I understand that about my, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I uh, understand that about my personality, okay? But I also understand the, uh, the blind spots in my personality. And that is oftentimes uh, I, it may take me several attempts to fill up the glass, okay? I may get the pitcher and realize, oh, I don't have the water. Okay, I got to go get the water. And, and other, somebody else might come back and say, well, he just quit. He's gone. He's not here filling up the glass. No, I went to get the water. Now, that because I wasn't prepared because my nature was, well, here, let me grab this pitcher and fill it up. And, and the pitcher's empty, okay? So my, I, I have to also understand the blind spots in my personality that I may take immediate action and get the ball rolling only to realize that I'm rolling it down the wrong lane, okay? If you're familiar with bowling, in other words, I might be bowling over in your lane instead of my lane because it's like, hey, I knocked the pins down but the wrong lane, okay? But I'm not afraid of that. You see, some personalities are afraid of failure. They're so afraid of failure that they never take action because they think one more. Yes, Jack and Jill had a similar experience. 
they take one more, they waiting for one more piece of information. Then there's other personalities that they're all afraid of what people will think if they can't do something. Okay, in other words, they think people, they're not going to like me anymore, they're going to think I'm a failure, and they get worried about other people, the other, the other people syndrome, and they get worried about how's this going to make me look? How's this going to make me sound? How are, are people going to think less of me? Okay, and then there's another personality type that, that they're not initiators. They're they're waiting for permission to do it. Well, nobody said I could fill up the glass. So the, even though the glass is half empty, or maybe it's half full, nobody's gave me permission to say that. Nobody gave me permission to do anything about that. Nobody gave me permission uh, to pick up the picture over there because it may not even be my picture to pick up. And so they get hung up on waiting on the initiative to take place. So understanding your personality uh, is a lot a part of getting rid of the thinking in your head, okay? Getting rid of the thinking in your head that's killing your self-confidence to get something done. So when you can figure that part out, when you can understand, okay, here's who I am and here's my Here's the strengths that I have, and here's the blind spots. I don't call them weaknesses. Some people call them weaknesses. They're not weaknesses. They're blind spots. They're, they're things that you don't have in your personality that, that you can't develop because they're not there. Okay, They're not there. Now, can you uh, engage them and implement them under you know, certain circumstances? Yes, but you still don't get it when you get through with it. Okay, You just don't get it. Okay? Uh, you know, I, I can't understand, and I, and I do not grasp why people struggle with change. Okay, I, I don't understand that. Okay, because I don't have that personality trait that is, uh, that 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 is a big deal about changes uh, takes you to an unsafe place. For me, change takes me to a safer place because I feel like I can adjust the circumstances as I go. Other people. They're afraid of the change because they're like, oh no, I'm going to be totally uncomfortable and I don't, I'm not going to know what to do. I'm not going to know what to wear. I'm not going to know what, how to act. I'm not going to know what to say. And see, my personality is I'll just figure it out as I go or I won't care what everybody else thinks or what everybody else says or what everybody else wants me to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's a personality strength, but it's also a blind spot. Other people, that's the hang up for them. So when you know that and you begin to understand that, then you can be confident in what you do. Now, some people, confidence comes because they do the same thing over and over and over and over. In other words, they get they, they are very good at repetitive actions. Okay? And they, that builds their confidence. Okay? That, but they have to know that about themselves. Okay? So it's a matter of putting yourself in an environment where that can happen. Right? All right. Now, the fourth one, the fourth, the fourth thinking that that oftentimes we have in our head that keeps us from doing things is fear. We have we're we're, we're afraid. We're afraid of the unknown. We may even be afraid of the known. Okay, you know, uh, I hear people talk about you know the uh, they're afraid of snakes. You know, a lot of people are afraid of snakes, and it doesn't matter what the snake is. It doesn't matter whether it's poisonous. It doesn't matter whether it's you know. Three feet long, ten feet long, or six inches long, they're afraid of snakes. They see a snake, they panic. They have a fear. Uh, some people, that even develops into a phobia. Okay? In other words, they're just, they just go zonkers, and they panic, and their body goes into a fear state, and they can't be confident. They don't know what, they don't realize, I'm bigger than that snake. I'm smarter than that snake. I know what that snake is. Now I recognize that snake's not poisonous, so therefore it is no danger to me. I should not be afraid. But fear paralyzes them where they can't be confident. That can be that way about uh, anything from a, a job, a task, a people. We get afraid of people. We get afraid of things that aren't even real, you know, and uh, and that kind of thing. So So we have to learn how to work through the fear. Get past the fear. So how do you, how do you get past uh, the fear? 
I used to be afraid of heights, okay? Uh, uh, and I, I don't know why, but I used to be afraid of heights. But I conquered that by, guess what? Getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher until I realized I'm not going to fall. I remember, I don't remember how, exactly how old I was, but I remember we went to the state capitol, live in Texas, so we went to Austin, Texas, to the state capitol, and inside the state capitol is a big, huge dome, and there's this spiral staircase all the way up to the top. And I remember the conversation was, okay, we're going to walk to the top, up the staircase, and I'm looking from the floor, looking up, going, that is really, really high. But you know what? I decided that day I'm going to walk the staircase because there's stairs and there's a handrail and I'm going to get to the top and walk all the way up. So I did that. And that's when I overcame my fear. It's because I faced it and I took action. I got prepared. I prepared myself here. I prepared my, I, I realized that the pathway was prepared and there was nothing to be afraid of. Now, does that mean I couldn't fall? No, I could still fall. I could have slipped down and fell out the rail and fell to my death right there and went splat on the capital floor, right? I could have, but I didn't think about that part. I didn't focus on something that might not happen. You know, woulda, shoulda, coulda. I, I, I didn't. So you got to learn to get past your fear and work on your fear. Now, you might need somebody to help you work through your fear. Oftentimes, it's helpful in your fear to tell somebody else, I'm afraid of that. Just the fact that you would speak it and pronounce it oftentimes will help you get past it. Talking with somebody else about your fear can also allow them, they may say, well, you know, I'm not afraid of that, but I'm afraid of this. Then both of and you might go, well, I'm not afraid of that. And both of you then have a, com uh, a companionship to talk about your fear. Well, tell me why you're not afraid of that. And once you hear what they have to say, you might be thinking, well, I didn't, I never thought about it that way. And then you, you get through it. So one, you can, t you can talk, you can pronounce that you're afraid. Number two, you can talk with somebody about it. Number three, you can develop a plan to get over your fear and expose yourself to the fear a little bit at a time. So let's go back to our analogy about snakes. What would you do to face your fear of snakes? Well, one thing you could do is, of course, Get online and read about snakes, okay? In other words, they're not physically present, okay? So there's nothing going to get you, right? Number two, then you could learn what's poison, what's not poison. What's a good snake, what's a bad snake? And I know some people say, well, the only good snake is a dead snake. That, that's fine. That's your, that's your philosophy. I get that. That's not true, but I get it. The next thing you might do then is, of course, go to the zoo where you can see snakes in captivity. They're alive. They're wiggling around. They might even come up to the glass, but they can't get you. Okay, They can't get you. So get familiar with being around them and being able to identify them and go, that's a non-poisonous snake. Okay, It's a non-poisonous snake. I don't have anything to be afraid of. Matter of fact, they don't even live here you know, in my part of the world, so I'm never going to see one, and I'm going to wait. So then find out what snakes live in your area. And you go face them. You go, you go look at them and check them out. Then another part of that component would be then, of course, to uh, have a plan. What am I going to do if I see a snake? I'm not going to yell and scream. You know, I'm not going to panic. Okay, uh, because what, whether you know it or not, when you panic, when you have fear, your body emits an odor. That, the, that an animal then senses with their and their smell, snake smell is way more powerful. I didn't look up the exact amount, but it's way more powerful than, uh, than your sense of smell. They can sense this person is afraid, okay? And, and you know, when they're this long, they're this long, right? And you're this tall, and they're thinking, what, you know. If something is afraid of me, and they may strike out at that because animals respond to fear. Because, you know, snakes exist to do two things. Reproduce, or three things. Reproduce, eat, and die. That's it. That's it. That's, all, that's what they exist for. So when they sense that something is fearful of them, 
then they are likely to attack. And of course, you're likely to panic further. So have a plan on how you're going to deal with snakes. Okay? How you're going to deal with snakes. And then you can do something, you know, that you might think is totally crazy. Go expose yourself to snakes in the live. Uh, and, and so if you see a snake in your yard, identify it. Realize what's there. Hey, Tim, glad to have you with us today. We're just we're talking about self-confidence. We're working on number four, which has to do with fear. You know, what do we do with fear? So you, you make this plan for fear. So if you're, again, catching us on the uh, on a broadcast, uh, you're coming in late or you catch us on the replay, be sure to click on notifications up there. You can also type in the comment box below. Let me know you're here. You just say hi. Tell me you're here. If you have a question, you can put it out there. Or if you have a thought or a comment that you want to put in, go ahead and do that because you can do that. Even if you're on the replay, it sticks with the video, and I, I, can, I might answer that in, in the process. All right, number five. Number five, let's talk about the fifth thing that's killing your self-confidence. And, and the fifth thing is you know, the ability for you, uh, the inability for you to to see yourself in a positive light, a positive light. Many people struggle with seeing themselves in the positive, okay? Because, you know, things happen to everybody. Things go wrong every day with everybody. Nobody has a perfect day because, one, first of all, we're human. Second of all, because everybody else around us is human. Third of all, because everything connected to us around us is somehow connected to human beings, and things go wrong. I don't care how, quote, perfect you might be or the things around you might be, things go wrong because we're involved, okay? But you have to look at your positive traits, who you are and what, what you bring to the table. And, and, what, and, and so you need to identify that. You might, it might be your skills. It might be some training that you've learned in life. It might be uh, some, uh, something about your personality. You know, it might even be your own good looks like me. You know, what, what can I say? You know, it, 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 could, uh, it, it could be, you know, who you are in life, what you've become, what you've accomplished. But your positive traits are really good ways for you to get rid of thinking that is keeping you from being confident. Because everybody struggles with it. I don't even the even the you know the quote unquote type A personality. If you're this person, the D you know the intense action D. Everybody struggles with confidence. Why? Because all of us have baggage in our life. We have things that has happened to us in life that we are trying to compensate and many times overcompensate for, and those things bring about a struggle for us. Okay, they bring about a struggle for us in our ability to uh, uh, be confident in that area. Not in every area, but in that area. So uh, number five you know, is realize that you're a confident person. Get rid of this thinking pattern that, that, uh, that, that you don't have anything to offer. Find out what that is that you have to offer. Now, how do you overcome environments of struggling with that? Well, first of all, many times what people don't, don't realize about themselves is they put themselves in environments or quote places that put them in the position to fail or to fear or to struggle or to quote look bad. Okay. Learn to recognize what that looks like. Okay. Learn to recognize and don't put yourself in that environment. So if you're not a people person, if you're not a people person, and uh, are you you're are you're not a person that likes to be up front? Don't put yourself in environments that call that people are going to surprise you and call you up front, and then you walk up to the front to say something, and you're staring you're staring at all these people, and you can't think of a word to say, and you just stand there. Are you mumble? Are you mutter? Okay. Be, now again, you can't totally eliminate that because you never know what people are going to do. But don't put yourself in that environment, right? Or if you're a people person or not a people person and, you know, you're not comfortable with a lot of people, okay, uh, then don't put yourself in an environment where you're going to get exposed to that, okay? In other words, don't put yourself in a place where there's a bunch of people going to be staring at you and you're not comfortable with that, right? Uh, even among the people people, 
You know, there's private eye people, what I call private eye people, and public eye people. There's some people that love the crowd. There's some other people who don't love the crowd. They love the small group of people. So you just have to understand that about themselves. Some people are uncomfortable with a, a you know a stack of tasks. You know, they you bring them a bunch of file folders and lay it down in front of them, and their eyes glaze over, and they're like, "Oh, I don't want to deal with this." Well, guess what? You you're going to have difficulty de so dealing with it. So don't put yourself in an environment that makes you uncomfortable if you can. Now I know you can't. We can't always you know, govern that because again, like I said earlier, we're dealing with a we're dealing with people, number one starting with ourselves, and people around us and stuff that all that people made, which could bring about us in a scenario that may not be the most positive for us. And then and then number six, uh kind of on the flip side of that, uh, you know, identify the things that 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 uh keep you from being confident. Know what those are. Flip that around to the things that uh, that you think are going to help make you confident. Like I mentioned earlier, if you need more information, if you're if you're a person that is good at collecting information and putting information out there and, and, and bringing about a plan and bringing it together because you know what you know that you know that you know, then demonstrate that to people, and people will be con have confidence in you. And that will help your own confidence. As a matter of fact, they may even say that, man, I always know that if 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 this person is involved, they're always going to bring this to the table. Okay, that instills confidence. So, as a person, if you if you are in a team of people, or with people, or work with people, or over people, or even in your family, or even in your own self, you might need to even write yourself a plaque and put it on the wall. I am blank. You know, I am a good leader. You know, I am a good information collector. I am a good speaker. I am a good friend. I am a good whatever, okay? And, and, I, I, and put that where you can see it and tell yourself that often so that you're able to build your own confidence from what you're thinking about and get rid of the things inside your head that are killing uh, your confidence, right? It's killing your confidence. So, uh, I encourage you to, to, to be a part of, of, uh, uh, talking with people, working with people, um, uh, interacting with people, uh, and that kind of thing to help you build that concept in, in, in your life. So, if you're watching today, or you're catching me on the replay, either one, and you've got something that you would add to the list, you know, thinking patterns that kill your self-confidence, and you want to add that to the list, why don't you go ahead and uh, do that uh, as I get a drink. Well, here's today. I, I, I want to certainly make a note of our sponsor today. You know, again, Louisiana is still just crushed with uh, people over there, still crushed, still, they're not getting any help from hardly anybody uh, on, on the whole recovery from the flood. You know, the government's basically left. You don't hear any more than hardly any news stories about it, unless a celebrity is going to do a, a benefit. You, you hear nothing about Louisiana and the flood victims over there. They're still struggling. They're still hard uh, to, to recover from the floods, places that they never dreamed would flood, flooded. People that never flooded before flooded. But you can help. You can help by going to the link below here. Uh, give to help la floodvictimsclub You can go there and donate. Uh, all the money go, is, is, uh, is, uh, goes to a 501c3 and in turn goes to other 501c3s on the ground there in Louisiana to give it directly to people and the needs there. We're, 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 we're partnered with churches and pastors over there that are ministering to people every day, trying to help people put their lives back together over there in Louisiana. And every donation you give goes straight to that. 100% of the donation goes straight to these people. So uh, if you'd like to be a part of that and uh, uh, give to this flood cause, well, we appreciate it. If you know other people, uh, you can do that as well. You can also share uh, share this video at the end or share it right now. There's a share button down there if you're watching it. You can you can share that on your timeline. I would appreciate it. 
because we're on here every Tuesday and Thursday. Most of the time, we missed last week. We had a bunch of other stuff going on. Uh, but uh, we're back on our schedule now, and we'll be talking about things. You can also catch other live casts I do by being sure to subscribe to uh, my live cast uh, as, as we do devotional things in the morning, and we usually do a leadership plug uh, every day, uh, talk about leadership, and then we do just other random things on our show. So I encourage you to be a part of that. Yeah, there you go, Marty. Thank you. Uh, there's the link. Uh, give to help la floodvictimsclub You can go there and give, and we would appreciate uh, you sharing that and, and, and uh, giving that to other people. So, hey, I appreciate it. Unless you've got another comment or two, I'm going to get out of here. We've been on here about uh, 30 minutes. Normally try to limit our show to about that time. And uh, we, we want to, you know, just provide the opportunity for uh, the show today and for you being with us. Again, my name is Dean Renfro. Thanks for being with us. Catch us on Thursday on our next upcoming Lunch and Learn. Watch for us in between anytime throughout the time that we might come on and share uh, a, uh, about uh, just different subjects here and there. So, hey, thanks for being with us. We'll talk to you later. Have a great rest of today.